Uh, is there anything that you've have you casted either of the teams before? Uh, th this last game was my first time ever casting. Okay, then I I have so. never seen either of these teams before, so this is gonna. I think I've like played with Ergo, or not played, but played against Ergo once in my yeah, life. I've never seen any of them. Yeah, um, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, it, it it'll be cool. We'll see. Well, I, I like some surprises. I want to see a really want to see a really confident Trager. Looking forward to seeing this. Oh. Chalet, this is an extremely attacker side of the map, so I don't, I don't know if Bloodhound was able to pick Defender or Attacker. They, I think they picked Defender myself, because it said Bloodhound Defends. Um, if Bloodhound picked Defense, this is very They have to have something odd. good. And they, they yeah, I, I'm very interested to see if they have an alternate strategy to like what NAL does or default ranked. Because what NAL does yeah. and what default ranked do are eerily similar. Quite similar. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, Finca coming out again. I I'm seeing more more nah, really fans just because it her LMG is too OP. They need to nerf it into the ground. Her I think it, there's nothing better about her. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping we see a uh, a Flores ban here. Yes, yeah. perfect. A Flores ban, yeah. Thatcher's still on the board. I don't really think that Thatcher's too OP on it, on this map, and especially since the nerf is going to be coming out soon with that bandit. Uh, patch also coming out. I do kind of... Did that already not happen? I could swear that happened this patch. It is. It is out this patch because the Nomad nerf came out this patch. Yes, well. yes, yes. Uh, Valkyrie ban, that's pretty much of a default ban. Um, i thinking a mirror ban, maybe? But... Uh, either mirror or a Cade, maybe? Uh, mirror? Uh, you... I think I book. think we Let called every single... <laughs> <laughs> I think we called every single... Uh, ban, but you know, pop off. I guess. I think yeah, that this is good. gonna be a really good match. I feel like it's gonna be a little bit more even. Um, yeah. Any predictions from early game before we officially start? I'll go. Being I'll honest, you pick first. I I think I, I I've, again I've never seen any of these teams, but off of the bans, usually a team that bans Finca usually is a bit more aggressive and maybe get some earlier gunfights off i i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna go with bloodhound i'll go with inferno just because they're attacking first <laughs> that's okay. the only reason why and i mean i would not be surprised if bloodhound or not or if bloodhound won just because they they, they pick picked defense pick defense and they might have mm -hmm. strats in the books uh a little and the fact they're already going bar, yeah. across the board as we could see um you know Getting rid of that Nomad Twitch uh, for Twitch and Knock being picked is a little, uh, you know, surprising to me. Especially, I do think that Knock is a little too OP in the current build myself, just because sound step on top of being able to walk through any gadget on top of having two nades on top of having a 1.5. She just also go through proxies. Too, um, proxies? Yeah, I actually, I actually don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, she can walk through proxies. That is um, nuts. Yeah, she's just too OP across the board. Um, I'm very excited to see where they are playing a little bit. You know, see, I, I really do want to see this knock, like, enter through. It does look like she's going to yep, be trying basement. to go through. Basement take. I don't know if they are able to identify that the Jaeger is there or not. Jaeger is in blue right now, playing a little bit too passively. She I don't think he's able to identify that they are taking big garage. We'll see. I'm I'm gonna predict that the Nox gonna kill this Jaeger here. I think she's gonna sneak up on him. Uh, Nox is still on drone, so I wouldn't be too surprised if you know anything out of the ordinary happens. Does look like they just forfeited Soul immediately. They are on you know default, so they are able to identify where they are, even though there is a Valk ban. So I don't think anything's gonna be too you know impossible. It does look like Nox is gonna start to pressure backstage to try and switch to her. Hoping that she's able to get this. If not, then this yeah, the Jaeger has no idea. I don't think as long as his, her ability out. doesn't run out. The ability just did run out, so she's going to play a little bit passively right now. Wait for her ability to charge back up, probably yeah. halfway before she begins to decide to go again. Back on her drone. I don't think he hurt. But if he did, he might have a chance. I think he might think it's above. Oh no! This is on the cam. Someone was on the default cam. This is excellent. Oh no! This is. 
Uh, this is gonna be ugly. Yeah. And he loses oh, the my. Unfortunate. You know, the Thatcher coming out that is a little bit interesting to me just because, you know, uh, I'm very, very inclined to say, you know, Thatcher is still a ridiculously overpowered operator. One Thatcher takes out all the utility on that ball. So, yeah. I would not be surprised if they just threw one Thatcher and then naded. That's what I would do, because one Thatcher completely takes out all the mice. You don't even need to burn. You can just... I didn't even think about the shield. I was more thinking about the wall. I was like, I don't know why they bring a Thatcher on this side specifically, but that's that's completely changed everything that I thought about this team so far. Ooh, early frag. That was that shouldn't have happened. Yeah, that really shouldn't have happened. Um, what I'm worried about here is if they drop down too early, they forfeit above. I mean, 40 seconds, but they've already held it for a fair amount of time. But I only think Inferno just kind of just got here. They were kind of more worried about droning and getting over to that Jaeger downstairs. The knock had a really good play, and it just ended up falling through her fingertips a bit there. They understand that there's someone blue, and I'm assuming they're going to drone at library. This, no, I don't think they drone at library. Right good. Past the oh, right now. I thought it was the real Yana. He's looking around. A missed call right there, in my opinion. Where are the problems? Yeah, this is, I mean, 2v3 two two on the side of the attacking team here. Drops sight and dies. Um... <laughs> I really want to switch my pick right now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, because I, that that was just a bad organization of an attack because there's miscommunication across the board. The the drone just got shot. How are yeah, you not was, looking behind you and looking through the hatch? Like that's just what I'm gonna see. It's just awful. Also, what I want to say is the utility usage on um, Inferno that was really good. And that's why I was really surprised that that went so bad later on. Is that like they were able to get the shield really quickly? Oh yeah. Um, I'm hoping that they don't bring up the knock again because, in my opinion, if if that's how it went the first round, they're kind of going to be looking for it, and I think it can only really work one round. So now that they've had that and they've kind of given away that kind of cheesy strat, um, I'm hoping that they can kind of fix what they did. Interesting, they're going basement. Usually, this is regarded as one of the worst sites. They're not extending anywhere. They have pretty much the default reinforcements. I'm curious if they're going to play this like a rank game. Yeah, they look like they were joining main breach. They have the default shield, default rotate. Um, yeah, Mozzie's just joining off above. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a ranked setup. Not really sure, though. I'm very interested to see why they decide to choose downstairs, because this is a default strat. Usually, a lot of the times, especially since there's no mirror, a lot of the times you like to see players open up this wine wall and uh, try and play a little bit more extended to see if they can get a little bit better of a foothold, because it's just kind of the... You get barreled, and if depending on what type of take they do, Mute is the uh, operator that they decided to try and counter wall breaches with. Um, usually you see that wall get opened and then play a little bit more aggressively. A spawn peak coming out onto the Amaru no, immediately. The Amaru, it was knock first round that got first picked. Now it's the Amaru. He's playing these really not super impactful ops in terms of utility. No, I think she repelled into window, I believe. Uh, I'm so certain of that. To identify yeah, to that's it. the gun. The guns. Yes. What? Well, well, like you play knock first round, you play Amara this round. You're trying to go for these cheesy strats, and they're roaming in the right places. They're playing it correctly. You need to at least have a drone there if you plan on Amaraing somewhere. She, uh, the first round, she did a really good job on droning on the knock, but that round that was kind of a misplay, and I think that's going to cost the team again. They have the wall open, and the one thing I was going to say, why I'm curious of why they went downstairs, is that they have Thatcher on the board. That means none of these walls are like. You can get all of them, and for downstairs, if they open up that wine wall and the main breach, you pretty much lose unless you pull a miracle. I don't know. So personally, I think if they frag this smoke, they have sight for free. Even then, I also think that they could probably try and go bait out this dude on the default plane. He does see the tip of his head, but is unable to shoot him. A nade? He does throw a Ooh. nade. I feel like they should start trying to go for a plant right now because that is the play. They're all also waiting for this player to try and creep down back blue, see if he can get any pressure. Doesn't seem that he oh, can see Oh, Mozzie doesn't Mazi. see him. Attackers dropped the defuser. Okay. He's on my. What I'm curious is that wasn't the smoke on the main stairs. That was the mute. Where is the smoke right now? Is he just playing pillar? If he's playing pillar, this can be an easy uh, uh, plant denial here. I don't know why they they're have trying to, to rotate get upstairs. I feel like if they don't rotate upstairs, they can get this default plant off for relatively free. See, he's in black box. Yeah, they're already right in. Now, and that's the, that's the Nade default. Kill. I'm surprised that the player isn't. Two of them are offsite. But we're. Okay, interesting. They have two guys off site. They were able to get plant down for free. They're now playing outside breach 3v3. 
the attackers inferno has every single adventure like i thought they would why go downstairs if thatcher's available i believe especially with that amaru early pick you know i i th this should have been this should have been bloodhounds round yeah I, I i i also think that it should be a bloodhound round but i also think that they played this ridiculously well in the first place you know just seeing that the players are you know they they said, all right, let's compose ourselves. It's a 4v5, and we're going to do this default pick. And then this is this is what I was talking about. I'm not sure if anybody was here for the last cast, but last cast I also said that this is what I was talking about. If you do your due diligence and drone and do a default push against these advanced strats, because you can definitely tell it was an advanced strat, because they had, I believe, four or three Sarah's players playing upstairs, and they had one person on the main stairs. If you are able to pressure that main stairs player at all, uh, even like they just walk in and he gunned the main stairs player because you know the main stairs player wants to get aggressive. You can just walk in and have a default plan. I like the pick of Osa here. You know, kind of relegating. It's a little bit of a better pick. A team oh? kill. Co oh, is because it was a zombie pick. Um, oh. Interesting that that'll happen in a off. league game. Yeah, I don't. That shouldn't really happen. That maybe maybe it was AFK or something. Maybe it was just a random pick. Um, what I am noticing is he needs, uh, I don't know how to say his name, the, the Osa here. He's died first each round. He's been a part of two opening frags and he's been on the losing end of both of them. And he's playing now a really useful operator. I'm hoping he has a smoke grenades and they're going downstairs again. If they open up the main breach, they can go for a pretty easy plan here, but that relies on him being able to be alive to the point of the plant. I don't actually know who's going to be having bomb here, but... Yeah, the switch onto Bandit also is a little bit uh, interesting to me, especially since, uh, you know, you don't have a lot of utility, especially with that mute. They do have to waste an impact on that rotate, but it does look like Inferno does get shot at least once with a pistol. Um, very interested to see how they want to try and take this. It does look like K2 is lagging a little bit, but I don't see a lot of alternate, you know, players. A oh, you can get the check off. Of Bandit trick. And the C4 and gets a kill. C4 gets the kill onto the uh, therm. Do they know that the player is on the drone hole? If they just go prone on the drone hole, you can win. But I don't think that they're going to drone this player. Up. No, no, I see him with the ghost shield. What I am kind of concerned about is the fact that they didn't bring all my. They brought a lesion instead, and that's not really helping. I mean, the impact ended up getting the shield there, but the bandit was able to get away as well. They're kind of just letting this round fall between their fingers because this was a really quote unquote easy round for Inferno. They were able to get the main wall open. They had that pretty easily. There was no trick coming out. They have the Osa, but they're not really capitalizing on any of the openings that um, Bloodhound is giving them. Never mind. Maybe he's maybe he's insane. I don't, I don't I still know how to pronounce his name. Yom? I want to say. Uh, Jaeger upstairs. It's now a 1v1 on 2v1 on site. If they manage to realize that and take that, it could be pretty easy for them. But I think they're sticking around to challenge Jaeger. No, they're going down West Main. You know, they realize that it's a 2v1 on the site. It should be fine. Especially since so, the player isn't running a shotgun right now. Very yeah. To see how they're going to try and stack this up. I wonder if the Jaeger is going to go for a flank anytime soon. Does look like he doubles up. No, he's back inside. And gets immediately down by the smoke. A little bit of unfortunate play, but I do think this is winnable by uh, Shup, as long as he doesn't whip this nade. Does look like no, he got, he got caught, caught by, by the ADS. ADS. And he whips the And he messes up the nade. That, that's, that's just unfortunate. Yep. Uh, I've had those moments where it just seems like you're just peeking a little too slow and it ends up messing up the round for you. What I am noticing like is Smoke has still has one more canister. It does look like they might take this time to do an in-game timeout right now. I do see a little bit of latency popping up, so that might be a problem on the stream end. But, um, you know, I do like this play coming out from uh, Inferno, personally. Even though they might have lost the round, I do feel like if you play this a little bit too fast, it would win. That's a, that's a frag on oh. the last player. Wow, this is actually winnable. Smoke grenade ended up going down, though. If he steps into that for a second, he's done. Doesn't know where the Jaeger seems to be pushed off to. I believe he doesn't even have bomb. He has to go for the frag here. Decides to waste the gong six in the shield, even though he knew of the ADS there. No idea. He's going to swing out, look at the shield, and then the Jaeger swings from connector, getting the frag, securing the round for Bloodhound here. I think it was just purely that early on frags that they messed up uh, on the side of uh, Inferno. And I think if they can just keep those people alive, maybe not play too aggressive on that breach after you open it up because that c4 pretty much lost in the round um killing that thermite so early on 
it, it seems like Inferno may have the better strategies here and has like a fairly uh, better attacking shot so far, I should say. They look like they know what they're doing. They look like they know what they're attacking. And they kind of have an idea of where they want to go. But they're kind of just losing these early on picks and it's costing them. I couldn't agree more. I also feel like, uh, you know, their utility usage is actually pretty good, and they're able to identify where they should start, and I also think that the IGL on this team is, you know, doing a, a damn good job right now. Even though they're losing, they're doing a damn good job of trying to keep their head up, you know, identify what the problem is. I have seen this a lot recently of people deciding to reinforce this wall, where people usually put a rotate just because they don't want that big big window player to have any you know pressure into piano but to counter with that i also feel like there might be a little bit of a problem with um you know i also feel like it might be a little of a problem with anybody trying to do a canine push um i do think that this is completely salvageable you know three three or four two um you know, in favor of inferno would be a good split in my opinion uh, I don't think if they go down uh, two four. I also think that this it's almost unsalvageable. I have seen crazier things pop up, but um, you know, three drones being thrown and I really like that. There's no west or excuse me, uh, mezzanine pressure at all. I don't believe so. They have a Kade nope. on the board this time, but it's kind of negated by that Thatcher. So you know, mm -hmm. very interested to see how they try and take this. Doesn't look like anybody's playing either blue or main, so, you know, it does look like they're trying to stack up on site with, you know, two players with C4s down below to see if they can counter any of the uh, default uh, takes. Yes. Um, cam is I do believe that it. if that Mozzie is able to get a late flank off, it could be devastational. They do have those two players underneath, as you did say earlier, but as of right now, it doesn't look like anyone's clearing them. But... I don't know. It, it, this could go in favor of Bloodhound here. Never mind. The, the honest while main stairs just was able to catch that out. Now it's just the Mozzie with the C4 underneath. Now it's does he rotate up or does he stay down there and kind of hail marry it? it it's unfortunate because the is still there, kind of watching that swing out. The only thing that could really mess up uh, Inferno's take here is if that Mozzie is able to get a really nice toss, which I doubt he will be. I I, I think if they can just funnel not funnel uh. Win the gunfight on the guy in piano, able to take away that shield, kind of clear that out. It should be fine. Like the mozzie there, just kind of sitting there waiting. But if he makes any sort of aggressive move, Charge other complete. than that C4, the Yana's going to get the kill here. Um, what I am seeing a lot of here is they're all looking the same direction. They're all kind of stacking up. The mute's got a C4 still. The smoke has two canisters left. Excellent utility usage on the side of. Oh, they didn't know the mozzie was there. No, this is completely different. This is this is that's most certainly around for Bloodhound here. What I am noticing is he's placing the C4, then running away. Uh, going to help us guys on site. They have no real control of piano here. They've thatched the wall. Gonna go for a little bit of a push here, aiming onto that rotate. Just but on since they've quick, reinforced that wall, you off real quick. That Thatcher just disabled the C4, so that person can't yeah. use the C4 anymore. Doesn't realize he stands up. Ooh, what I am uh, liking so far is with that reinforcement, they have no line of sight into like that deep rotate. It all relies, it gives the defenders the complete advantage. Was removed by Battle Eye. I think that Interesting. is a... Interesting. What I am noticing is he's not playing where the C4 is, so it doesn't even matter that he's dead. Inferno just seems to have the better manpower here. One guy left, Jaeger, I believe is in sight, kind of just holding back. I, if I was him, i kind of take this just talk with the team, kind of calm down. But I think he's going to swing. He's close on the half wall there, swinging the guy on K9. Ends up losing the frag to the Thatcher there. Rehost. Okay. And it wasn't something that I thought it was, and it is just a, just a bug. Yep. Um, I am a little confused by that battle I banned, but, you know... Sometimes that does happen. Um, yeah. We will be, I believe, you know, just relaxing for right now. Let me just try and get this back up. VPL. Mm. I do, I person. I think everybody across the board was having a little bit of a lag issue because I did see that players were starting to, like, glitch through rotates and stuff. I don't believe any of them are central. That is why. Um, I personally am not central, but I am sure that i was put it on central or i did put it on uh, central. last round i last i believe when you set it up the first time you put it on east 
So I'm not sure. Um, what I am kind of worried about here is that Bloodhound, they did pick off the defensive round there, and that may have... I don't know if it was because the, the guy DC'd, but it didn't look like they really had an idea what was going on there. They looked kind of a little bit confused, a little bit worse for wear, and I'm not sure that upstairs side is going to work out well for them. It's not as if they went double window or anything. They just kind of forced their way in. The Kate overextended there and kind of cost his life. Losing a C4, relying on that Mozzie, which... We saw he ended up dying before he could use the C4. I don't think it would have been too useful due to the fact that they didn't plant next to the C4. But in retrospect, it still could have helped even a little bit to provide any sort of scarcity on the side of uh, Inferno. I, I um, completely agree. I also think that, you know, uh, BK swinging out in kitchen was a little bit too aggressive. I feel like if he, you know, halted a little bit and said, you know, right, let's take our time, you know, save that utility. I feel like that could have been a bloodhound round. But, Easily. Uh, you know, the, that pick off of uh, that pick that Yana managed to get uh, was really good um, in that Cade, it, you know, gets that, you you know, he can't Cade trick from beneath anymore, even though Thatcher is, is technically on the board. And he also can't um, waste his, you, you, there's no more utility of that C4 anymore. You know, dying with that uh, utility in his pocket was also kind of detrimental. Uh, so the first round was... Bar gaming, yeah, or yeah, bar gaming. They won that, so that's a that's blue win. Yes. Uh, yes. And You're on wine cellar, by the way, not bar gaming. Yeah, and then blues defending first. Yeah. And then it was downstairs orange win. Uh, your first one. You have wine win. Should be bar gaming. Above that, near right there. Bar gaming, Perfect. Wine, it was an orange win. Then it was a blue win, wine, correct? I believe so. And then it was an orange win. Master For upstairs, day. yes. Perfect. All right. Everything should be good. Close, invite. Mm -mm. What I'm a little bit worried about is Blood, not Blood on, sorry. Uh, Inferno was kind of gaining some momentum there, and they were able to counter exactly what Inferno, uh, sorry, Inferno was able to counter exactly what Bloodhound was doing pretty consistently that round. They had an idea of where the guy was. The only misplay I saw was they didn't actually know that Moz was there. They kind of just face checked, and that cost Liana her life. Um, though, even in general, there, they had an idea of what was happening. They knew where the guy was. They had decent drones. Uh, only one mess up I could really see there. But other than that, they're doing really well, and I'm hoping that it doesn't halt their momentum. Hmm. Is uh, I, I don't remember Shut being there. Am I wrong? <laughs> I could be I just drunk. Don't either, but we'll, we'll see. Let me do this. I want to say something else. Uh, I'm really happy that this game, it looks like these teams are very uh, organized. They haven't made too many careless mistakes besides those first two rounds with the knock on Amaro. Other than that, it looks pretty nice. It also feels like we're not playing uh, a very default type thing. It looks like it's kind of changed up a bit. You've got all these different areas that you're playing properly, like even on their basement round where it looked mainly default, they still have that upstairs hold inside of dining kind of caused a little bit of confusion. They ended up losing that round, but still, it, it's it's nice to see something that isn't in ranked. It's nice to see something that is kind of adapted and honestly, it, really well formulated as the IGL on that team obviously understands. So I'm a little bit, uh, you know, interested to see that I did see a little bit too much face checking coming out from, um, I believe it was Inferno. Yep. Inferno had a lot of face checking that last round. But they still managed to come out on top with the uh, with the win on that round. But uh, I'm surprised the sledge wasn't punished, especially since there was a player on that uh, that sandwich wall where you know players usually do get punished if they do tr decide to swing out. Even though there was a, also a player on bathroom, maybe you could kind of try and aggressively peek that or see you know what you can hold because I doubt that he's holding half wall at all. But you know. It's just incredibly 
odd round, in my opinion, just because a yeah. lot of things that you should punish technically weren't punished. But, um, you know, other than that, great communication on that wall take. That Thatcher technically disabled the um, C4. C4, and I don't believe that the C4 was used because the thermite did rotate downstairs. I do believe that uh, right, they said both ready. Um, I'm going to say one more thing there as well. I don't know who it was, but I, I'm, I'm still kind of dumbfounded that that guy behind piano unprone and was able to just kind of stare at the sludge there for a bit. Um, I don't know if it was because of the smoke grenade, the, uh, the smoke canister, that he wasn't able to see him, but it was just really odd to see from that perspective of the sludge. I agree completely, just because it is um, it, it is incredibly odd to see that coming out from the smoke. Um, mm -hmm. This this round, though, is... Uh, I'm very surprised to see what type of take they wanted. Did they try... They're going to go back to that bar gaming. Um, Inferno did lose this last time. I would alternatively say, you know, Thatcher, you can throw your Thatcher and disable all electronics. And Thatcher isn't really useful on this map, especially since you can get all the walls for free. I don't know if Thatcher is just say, trying to pocket utility because of if they're worried if there's a Cade on hatch that they want to reinforce hatches. But past that, let let those let those fly. Let the Thatcher grenades yeah. fly just because you know if you try and pocket those, I don't think you're going to be able to succeed. You can just throw one like right at that window sill right there, and yeah. we'll get that ADS everything. In the corner. And everything around it, and you—it's a free nade, even though you need to waste any utility, and you can keep all the utility in your pocket. It is great. Even then, you can still try and like throw maybe one or two, just to make sure that there's no Wamai discs. Also, I did notice that last time they didn't have any pressure on West Main, not West Main, excuse me, like, or no West Main, yeah, the West Main, yeah. like the trophy side, soul side, and they did repel into soul for free. Which is a lot of the times you do see that in an NAL, or you might see one player try and stick around there. A lot of the times you see, watch OXG, you'll see Laxing go over there, and that's where you can get the stat pad, technically, just because, you know, yep. it's it's free kills. They're on repels. What are they going to do? Try and upside down repel PQ? You just play passively until you hear it for free. So if you were able to do any of that, then, you know, more power to you. Those look like they do have the front hold on the right wall, and Zion is playing over there. They are doing their due diligence in droning. Kind of difficult for some other teams, but you know. Yeah, we... I'm noticing that I don't think they actually drone the Jaeger out. I don't think they actually know he's there. That was an upstairs drone. He was downstairs. Yeah, he's just on the stairs. He's pulling a laxing. Yeah, and he got away with it. Um, what I am going to say, though, is last time that this site was played, Inferno only lost it, in my opinion, due to the fact it was a 4v5. And in this round, it's going back to the same thing. We're at a 4v5 early on with very minimal damage being put onto Zion here. Ooh, almost another kill onto K2 there, but he ends up way, slipping away with his life, and the Omai will continue to be a bit of a nuisance here upstairs. Um, I am kind of worried that they're not going to be able to take rid of these shields, because Thatcher, perfect, there he is. He'll get the one nade over here. Hopefully no one swings him on this, gets rid of the shield. No, he didn't do the... Oh, he didn't do it left enough. Got rid of the Omai. I'm hoping that they got rid of all of them. No, they're not able to get the shield. They have no more nades. The other set of nades is now gone. It did? Oh, no, it didn't. Wow. No, it didn't. Yeah, they have no more sets of nades. They kind of have to rely on Zofia here, and I'm not sure that she's able to swing that without getting punished. It's it's going to be extremely odd here, because, yeah, it's the smoke has all of his canisters left. He has a good position, good health. Nothing's really bothering him here. He, he has all the time in the world. He has, he's wasted all this time, and there's no way that they can really get rid of him. Um, They get in the wall, pushing that out. I'm not sure how many... No way they have one more Thatcher left. It, it looks unlikely for Inferno to pull this away. Yeah, especially since they have so much utility just there and they're just able to do it for free. That's two Zofia She missed both! Lifting. They do rotate downstairs, so technically they do have upstairs control for free. 4v5, Redbone is in the corner still, but past that I feel like, you know, this upstairs control you can use it to your benefit very Oh, very they understand well. that he's there though. And one down to Frost, two down Frost Traps! No! Red one does go down though, which is okay. That kind of pulls back around the back a bit. I'm curious to why Smoke rode the tan down so quickly. He had all the utility in the world in a great position. Now Lackey coming up behind here. Kind of cleaning up sight here. Has to peek Ergo here. Ergo holding a very 
Honestly, very bad angle. Going down the main stairs, able to catch him on behind. Lackey kind of pulled that back. But... That as well, just because it's kind of a situation where you can't really flick anywhere unless you're trying to flick down the stairs and past that. And there's yeah. nothing really that you can do because he can re-peak the shield and he could also go down the stairs and he ended up going down the stairs. A great round from Bloodhound that time, but Inferno needs to win this round if they want to have a really good split. Clash onto the board. That is a very interesting pick. Very, uh, you know... And kind of off brand, but I could understand the pick. Uh, you know, Cade also, Cade Mute Smoke, Jaeger Clash. Not a lot of roam presence. I could see the Mute maybe roaming as well as Jaeger, but past that, once you get that Jaeger off the board, I feel like you might have map control clear. Um, great round that last round from Bloodhound. They, you know, their Attackers hold onto that, you know, bombs. that well, my, I also, that is also why I said maybe if you double up with the stuns as well. Just because the my discs can be thrown alternatively, unlike ADSs, if you throw like two stuns around, around uh, on top of those Thatchers, you can still technically clear that shield. It's a little unfortunate that they decide to do that and they decide to just throw a nade in. I do remember saying that that might have worked, but it does look like the uh, that Bloodhound was prepared for that eventuality of Thatcher not being banned, so they put their. Um, my discs a little bit further. Great round from Bloodhound. I also do like to clear from Inferno as long as if they don't, you know, if Jen doesn't get picked off super early and on top of that, if uh, anybody else doesn't really Oh, get... he destroys his own K-Charge. Okay. Um, what I am going to say again here is Yam is on the Ash. I'm curious to see where he's going to from and if he's going to have someone drone for him. Because last round, the droning was absolutely amazing coming up from Inferno early on. Uh, the only issue I really saw was the Egger, but after that, they kind of sh sharpened up and they were able to really correct what was happening. Um, and then I was really I really confused in the fact that they two of them were able to fall into Frost Traps after already joining that area pretty thoroughly. Understanding that there was a guy there, a Frost of all people, was there. Um, and they were able to just fall into those traps and kind of slip the round away from their hands. Um, but I... a nade for that clash. I don't think it doesn't kill her, and they don't capitalize on their shield being swung up. Interesting here. Uh, EO playing Gusser here. Another nade coming in. I'm worried that they have to capitalize on it, and they don't again. Ash is now down by herself again on K9. No one's really joining with her. Unfortunate positioning, in my opinion. Um, I think they, they've got the control of uh, Bar. I actually don't know where the Ash died from. I think they're aware of this Cade being able to push him. But that Jaeger's still upstairs, pretty much uncontest. That could be an issue later on. But they're worried about this Cade flanking them. I believe they understand that he's there. They have main breach open. They have a lot of control that they could have. But they just, it's all about taking it. Joining out the Cade. Smart. Actually joining out. This is really good. Ends up downing the Cade, getting the kill. Excellent job from Shep there. Uh, now they only have to worry about the Jaeger, which they know about. Whoever's droning right there, excellent droning. Oh. Ergo gets swung by breach, I'm assuming. Dies. Gonna go see if they can clear out this Jaeger. Don't really have an idea of where he is. Oh, maybe they do. No, oh, no, they don't. They have no idea. Jaeger misses a couple bullets there. Understands that there's one guy pushing him. I don't think he knows that there's two pushing this Yana. Trying his best to waste as much time as possible. No, oh, this someone's on the default cam. Understands he's there. Ends up losing the gunfight, but wastes a load of time. Less than a minute left in the round. Full HP on both attackers. 2v3 versus a Clash. What I'm worried about here is they only have one nade. The Thatcher could help deal with the Clash, but that nade has to be really well placed on the Ana if they want to kill him. On top of that, um, they also just wasted the nade, and they also have that shield to worry about. Even though he's not playing the shield and he's playing a basement hallway, I could definitely identify, you could say that if they wanted to play in sight and play a little bit more passively, they could definitely win this. I don't believe that they understand that the player is in basement hallway. Oh, no they do. Don't know. This is fantastic coming up from shop here. Although that smoke canister, they're gonna be left with what six seconds. Now smoke playing close to the shotgun. Absolutely gonna destroy the Yana. Swinging out aggressively here. A bit too aggressive, dying to the Thatcher there. A two v one versus the Clash. I see a very low likelihood that Inferno is gonna pull this away. A four two half gonna be going out here. Um, pushed up that Thatcher is. Oh, never mind. The team kill. He just decides to throw it away. Very smart by the mute player there. Although interesting choice to blow that C four after you realize your Clash is close there. But nevertheless, excellent. Be played there by Bloodhound. 4-2 uh, half on their behalf on defense. Oh, yeah. I also feel like that was a great defense from Bloodhound right there. Uh, Inferno also is doing really well with their clear. Um, 
you know, I just on top of that, I also feel like they wasted a little bit too much time on that main breach, unless you can identify it. And if you get that clash kill, you can definitely open up that main breach. Or if you, on top of that, if you want to try and overload that that mute, I don't understand why you're trying to hold passive angles, especially with a clash where you can just get pre-fired and quick peeked, like he was. Um, I wouldn't if you identify that clash on main breach. I could understand maybe one person sticking around just to, you know semi like fake apply pressure to that site, but past that, I don't Defender understand why anybody would stick around after those two nades failed. Um, great round from Bloodhounds on top of the board. I do see a lot of reef picks coming out. It does look like they switched to gridlock, which I did. I'm not, if anybody's familiar with me, they understand that there are two things that I am a firm belief of after this patch. I think that Thatcher isn't going to be banned as much. And I also think that once the Finca and once the LMG nerf comes out and they go back to regular like bands, I also think that um, Mav is going to be banned a lot more just because Mav is technically now the better operator with that bandit uh, with a bandit 100%, 100%. option coming out. And on top of that, I also believe that Gridlock is the better operator to Nomad just because you still technically have you technically have a little bit less utility because you have the three air jabs plus three stuns and you go from that the three uh candela not candelas excuse me the three tracks four tracks and then uh you have the two smokes which i mean yep. uh, minus one utility isn't the death of you also on uh, top of that or no technically it's not even a minus four, one it's, because it's the it's same four yeah. tracks yeah yeah but um I, I just think that Gridlock is now the superior operator at this point in time. Uh, very interesting hold to see that they're doing a kitchen dining take. This is the first defense that we've seen of this so far throughout the game. Um, I do like that they're applying pressure vertically from downstairs. I don't see any player opening a bathroom. If you technically open up the bathroom floor, uh, you can do really well to make sure that they don't pressure down there, but it does look like they're alternatively uh, going to a, a different side. Also, on top of this, I do not like the utility on Buck. Why are you running hard breach? I mean, hard breach? okay, it's it's kind of... Honestly, yeah, they have none of the hatch reinforce. I also want to say something. Um, Bloodhound, not Bloodhound, Inferno has four reinforcements in pocket. They have not used all the utility. They could have reinforced off offense and kind of played a bit more aggressive, but they kind of just let them have it. The Jaeger, not holding that shield very aggressively, they kind of let them have it. They've opened up into Master as well, kind of taking a buff control quite aggressively here. But Yam seems to... I don't even know where he was. Oh, he's in the uh, door and Master there. Excellent frags. Although Jen is now very low on HP, pretty much a, a hair away from making it even on here. Um, Inferno seems to know where the people are. Uh, Shop. Again, getting a nice frag there. I'm not actually sure if he's in bathroom or not, but that seems like it might be an infernal round. As long as Jen doesn't peek overly aggressive here and can keep himself alive, they have bombed down. They understand where the guy is. I believe this guy's about to repel in an easy frag for Shup here. Oh, no, he... I managed to step into the tracks, alerting the attacker of his presence. Um, I'm hoping that they know where Zion is here. The alibi is still holding a rather passive angle. If she overswings us, this could really change the pace of the... Defense here, right underneath his crosshair. That's really unfortunate. Repelling in big window. Great luck now in big window. They're both on the side of the map. Hopefully, Jaeger knows that and he's not going to continue to watch those windows. Excellent kill there by Jen. Jen's still on that sliver of HP. Hopefully, knowing where the Zion is. Bathroom door. Um, no, no flashes on Zion. This is the downside to bringing those harbor devices is that he is kind of he's forced to win his gunfight here. He has really nothing he can do besides win his gunfight. That hollow there seems to be pretty scared of the C4 slash holes underneath. Looking towards where he thinks Jen is pre-firing. He also Charge knows there is one on the solar. Most likely going to push up either through bathroom or through master. X finally gets the kill on Jen there. Pushes into bathroom here. Understands there's holes underneath. Doesn't end up getting the kill in the smoke. Really trying to. Kind of does a couple 360s. Understands he's going to lose the round. I'm but other than that, Inferno. I'm personally surprised that the smoke just decided to, like, run away. <laughs> I don't... Even if you miss your shots, you switch to your secondary and you just try and wall bang that dude because the dude's... He, he missed his shots as well. I'm surprised that you just decided to try and walk away, turn your back to him. But, you know, other than that, great round from uh, Inferno. Inferno had a really solid take. Uh... Yum yum, Brunk. you know, upstairs really was the savior of that round. That double piece yeah. onto both, I believe it was the Yana and uh, Ash, I believe. Yeah, yeah, it was Yash and Yana. Um, the two piece there really getting rid of a lot of utility. Um, 
defenders protect your bomb. I am kind of curious why they're bringing a rook. <laughs> hmm. I am also surprised, but I, at this point, I'm not too surprised because Yum Yum has, you know, gone technically on the record and uh, said that, and not said, but he's proven that he isn't using the traditional operators. He uses, he uses alternative operators that you don't usually see in a game like, you know, we saw an Amar, we saw... So far, Knock. we've seen a lot of weird ops. Right now, we're about to see a Blackbeard. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we've seen Blackbeard, Clash, Knock, or Maru, and now we see Rook. This isn't a traditional siege game in any area whatsoever. Um, very interested to see this type of hold. Kind of confused on what they're trying to do upstairs here. You know, a little bit of late reinforcing, just kind of, you know, goofing around. Yum Yum did not reinforce a single wall, so. He was shooting around, yeah, they're shooting the glass. I'm not overly sure if he's a part of the main roster here, but he's still getting his frags. Nevertheless, he's doing whatever he's supposed to be doing. He's doing it pretty well. Uh, getting the main breach again with the Thatcher. I was worried, I was hoping that they wouldn't go downstairs off of what they saw. Uh, Bloodhound do downstairs and how easy it was for them to be able to open the beam wall, yet they still do it. K2 going to be pushing down through Wine here. Droning, excellent. His drone's upstairs for some odd reason, but hopefully he can bring that down. It's a nice flashes here. Dion here, switching to the flashes. He realizes his previous mistake. Really bringing that utility in for the team. What I am noticing here is it's really an aggressive Rook play up main, and I'm hoping he doesn't get too aggressive and end up losing his life here. Um, but he is, isn't a whole lot of, like, his, he doesn't have a lot of pocketed utility, so he's able to play this breach pretty well. But if he loses himself too quickly to the buck main door, it could be very hard for Inferno to kind of claw back here, because that's your main stairs guy, that's a really important player, uh, in terms of denying that plant. I do see that Bloodhound is starting to rotate outside a little bit more, you know, switch up their attack. They did open up the main <laughs> breach, and this is something that Inferno, personally, I think, struggled with. Inferno said, you know, all right, we got the main breach open. Let's try and get this main breach to work. They don't understand. I, I feel like, you know, uh, Bloodhound understands, even though we opened up the main breach and we still have their two support players there, we need to somehow pressure something externally as well to see if we can get anything else working for us. And Redbone getting a little bit of done to him by the, I believe, is the Rook with the Mai. By but um, I'm very interested to see this flank come out from Jaeger, see if he actually does. He's getting wall banged a lot from Attackers alternate options. Does look like the Rook did walk upstairs a little bit. A wall bang coming out from the Jaeger. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but that was a wall bang, I believe. You know, Blackbeard getting that pick immediately on uh, onto the screen. Player walking down blue, a little bit of potato coming out from the last player, but a nice shot coming out from Jen, all onto Zion. Zion is the player to clutch this up, if you do want any of the players on Bloodhound to clutch this up. I feel like he has the best mechanical skill on the roster, in my opinion. Um, you know, trying to flick. Well, he gets one, knows where the second one is, 30 seconds left on the clock. Um, he's trying to play a little bit more passively on this metal box, but he says he can't uh, wall bang through it. You know, Inferno playing a little bit more passively. I do believe he is getting spam pinged on the default cam. Goes for the default plant. You know, on that salt hard wall. It does look like he knows that the player's there. He did bait perfectly onto Zion. Zion gets a little bit too aggressively. And this yeah. is a Inferno round, unless I was about to say. No. He did oh, see the player run across his face, but I doubt that anybody's going to try and pre fire that. If. Yeah, he pushed a little bit too aggressive and had to go uh, had to go aggressive in those final seconds. I feel like that's a perfect bait by Inferno. 4-4, four, four, uh, you know, this is incredibly even in my opinion. I feel like these two yeah. teams are matched up very well against each other. I feel like, you know, the, the gun skill on the side of Zion compared to, you know, the structural integrity of Inferno. I'm not sure what Yum Yum's doing myself, but he does have the mechanical skill to make up for his, you know, lack of I, I shouldn't say lack of, but I should say, you know... Interesting play style. Yeah, his interesting play style. I, I'm not sure if that's built into the... Uh, I'm not sure if that's built into the, attackers. you know, game plan at all. But, you know, a very good round from uh, them. Anything that you have to uh, uh, Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing something on Inferno. You said it yourself at the beginning here. You said this map is extremely attacker-sided. And I was, I was looking and I was like, mm, you know, these teams, I could see that being a very attacker-sided map. But right now... It, the the fact that it's even and it was a 4-2 half and now the offensive half got the first two rounds here is really odd to me because 
I was fully with you. I was like, yeah, this is a defend uh, attack side of map. This is going to be kind of a maybe a four two, a four half, you know, on the other side. But we're showing this right now that it really depends on the team that plays it. And these teams are so evenly matched in the way that it doesn't really matter what side they're on. They're going to win their gunfights. They're going to push properly. They're going to drone what they need to, and it's going to be a good game. I, I take. I don't know. It's. It, I'm guaranteed this is going to overtime. I wouldn't say that. I think it's going to be seven five myself. I think that it's going to be 7-5 in Inferno's favor just because I feel like Inferno has all the momentum on their side. They got two rounds in a row to make it an even split, and they're, they're defending one of the better sites in the map. They have such a diverse defensive pool because they did just go basement and win it when def uh, when basement isn't particularly their strongest. And yes. I would much prefer to see them either go upstairs or even downstairs, or not downstairs, poor or games, but... As previously said, we have identified. It does look like they are trying to overload Yum Yum right here. See if they can get Nade off and uh, kill him. Doesn't I'm really like hoping. Oh, that. God, I will get down. I'm hoping. No, he isn't down. I'm really hoping they don't follow those raw shafts because last time that was why Inferno lost that round. And if a Bloodhound falls to the same thing, I'm going to be quite disappointed. Nope. Redbone seems to be droning, and I'm hoping he was able to drone it out. Yes, he pings the frost traps. Excellent play there by Redbone. Um, they realize what the enemy team did wrong on their defensive half, and they are changing that. They understand there's one on the me uh, mezzanine there. Hopefully, they can clear that out. They have the Thatcher. I'm curious. Yeah, he has one more Thatcher EMP. They have one more nade that should be able to take out the shield if they need, but it all depends on how they play this. I don't think that was a great choice by EO there. Playing aggressive, going in by himself. His entire team is no longer with him. Jen and, and Shup here had the complete advantage there. He, if he waited a little bit longer, Zion and the Blackbeard of K2 was able to back him up there. But he kind of just decided to go in by himself. And it cost him his life. Now it's a 4v4 and a minute 10 left without upstairs control. Doesn't actually look too well here for uh, Bloodhound. I'm surprised that they decided to forfeit this uh, Roach. You know, kind of play yeah. too passively, in my opinion, because, you know, Zofia had that pressure downstairs. Redbone getting the refrag onto the two picks of Ash and um, K2, which is the Blackbeard. Uh, I don't. I feel like they try to get a little bit too aggressive and they pressure out the right players in the correct time. But honestly, this, this looks like an Inferno round just because, you know, you don't need to get aggressive at all. You can just kind of turtle up. 40 seconds left on the clock, so they're going to need to make a play sometime soon. I feel like if you watch the hatches and if you look through know anything else alternatively they might try and rotate down to do a downstairs take which is well one's in sight had which no I that enemy cash. that's nuts the only thing is if they don't have another where's the other guy where's Sophia oh no oh no Jen has Jen just runs at him oh no the, the, they've they've scrapped this round back bloodhound has completely taken this back I'll be so confused if they lose this now they have the ups they have upstairs in front of us upstairs he has to jump out here, I think. Where is Atsofi? He's playing a bit back, the uh, Thatcher. Outside. Doesn't give away his position yet. No one's going for the defuse. 25 seconds left. They were both outside there for a second. Now it's 1v1. I don't particularly understand why that happened. Now Redbone kind of has the opportunity just by passive here. He has the complete advantage. No! Oh! Oh! Okay. 1v1 here. Has the opportunity. Has to stick defuse. If Redbone just swings this, he's won the round. Doesn't even matter. He doesn't even have to go. Redbone there, the MVP of that round, 10 times over. I'm so surprised that they managed to let him sneak into sight because honestly, you know, you usually see those holes across the other side just to see if they have any head, head holes or if they're able to play alternate, or, you know, into the other site and, you know, hold that angle that or any of the default because you can't just have one area of contestion and that's what they got punished for. If you have maybe those head holes in the other bar to see if they can, you know, hold the player if they want to push big window or anything like that you know Zofia kind of played that a little bit weird in my opinion just because you know yep. the upstairs hold wasn't really the best and to try and cover him upstairs when you weren't even Defenders in surprised they you know got away with a round like that but you know it, it, that's just more of a inferno throw in my opinion than it is of uh, a bloodhound win just because you know the, i mean the rounds that they had they should have they should have played more passively and in better positions because you're still holding upstairs. There's no need to hold upstairs when there's 40 seconds left and this is a 3v2. No matter what they do, they cannot get all three of you. Even if you're playing in, like, maybe coat check or, some, uh, or something else, I feel like you might be able to, you know, win or be able to identify. You know that that player is in sight because you have the Maestro Cam alive. 
even though he mm -hmm. thatchered it. You know that there's a thatcher in sight because we saw a maestro move around his camp. Or we don't know if it's a maestro or not because other. Uh, but one of the players, yes. Yeah, but you know that there's a player in sight. If there's a player in sight, and you you automatically have to assume that that player has the fuser. That's like it's it's like you have to take notes from secure area almost just because like well that's the site you need to defend it. Um, um I am gonna say something right here is Redbone. In, I, for at least what I've seen here, he's the one that's droning. He's the one that's kind of on. Even right now, he's droning. He is doing he is doing the most. He is the MVP for Bloodhound right now, and I'm calling it right now. He is droning. He's winging them rounds and he's getting frags. He's playing the game really smart. And I want to say even if they lose this. Uh, Redbone has done so much that I think we still have to give him props where props is due. He's done a fantastic job in what he's done here so far. 100%. I also agree that like, I feel like if we if we look at all the the play days, I feel like Redbone might be the most um, impactful yeah. player across the board. His cost is probably so high at this point it's because the rounds that he is dying are the rounds that they are losing. Um, yep. I think later on we're gonna see uh, Redbone become a very really uh base bone character and i think he's going to be that backbone of the team uh he's even playing thatch right now like he is going to be this excellent player uh pick on k2 there on the knock uh, not i don't think she even got to use one of her nades i'm noticing the more it doesn't matter which team is bringing the knock or which team is bringing this really weird characters they kind of get shut down really quickly and we if, speak of the guy that was doing it yano gets killed by a nade there um what i am noticing as well is They've, they've gotten a lot of control already, and there's a minute and 20 left. There is two guys upstairs, but they have the wall open. It looks pretty good. They have a guy in basement for... Maybe I, maybe I don't know something, but it looks like a pretty good hold here for um, Inferno. Yeah, another Zion's pick there from Jen. As well. So, you know, this, is, this honestly looks like an Inferno round, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, definitely. Four players left on the clock. Learn from your mistakes. Start to turn up in sight. It's sight. Defend sight. And Redbone is still alive, so it is still, you know, a wide open game. Awesome. The two support players. One player is upstairs, and they did ping the player upstairs. This is going to be a little bit more difficult for them to try and take. It does look like Redbone is droning right now. I'm um, very interested to see if they're going to be able to play this at all aggressively enough to win this round. Um, I believe he knows that the person is half off. Does get a little bit of damage done to the. Uh, lesion, but does get traded back for a little bit of damage. You know, all those those damage shots are the most important. I'm surprised no one was on the drone and called out Jen from upstairs. But on top of I that, left and shop confirms the kill. Uh, yeah. It's just you're, you're getting put in a situation that isn't really winnable, and you know, you you are I I I'm trying to put it into words, but you're getting put into situations that you need to win. I'm happy that Bloodhound decided to put a, a time out there because they really need it. I think the fact that they're putting these fraggers, I'm assuming, I don't know these people very well. I've just kind of read their names. Uh, Ghost and K2, I'm assuming those are the more fraggers along with Zion. I think K2 might be a flex player, but along with them, you're putting these on these like really frag intensive roles and they're not really able to get in these places. They're quite dying early. They may, like Ghost has been getting a couple kills here and there, but it's not really these insane like kill rounds that we kind of need from these fraggers we need these consistent frags and k2 even on the knock that round was able to be caught out um didn't bring much utility wasn't able to bring the nades wasn't able to use the nades um kind of really weakening the side there redbone left in that 1v4 kind of an unwinnable situation for him uh you can tell that they're all like I, how's this none of them are playing poorly they're just having these small mistakes and i think that's so easily fixable and that's why i was so happy to see this timeout from them uh, at a point where it's not too late, you know? Um, what I do want to say here is, on the side of Inferno, the communication is really, 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 really good. Um, I'm kind of worried that they're getting a bit too passive uh, in the way that they're holding stuff. Like, I don't think Argo has a kill yet. He may have got one last round, but he had zero kills there for a bit there, and I was kind of hoping he was able to get around to some sort of a position that would help him get that, because I've been in that situation where you get no frags, and it feels you got to get your mental a little bit down, and it kind of crushes you. Yeah, he still is 0-4 there. Um, he's playing the positions he is really well, though. That smoke was very helpful. Uh, he may not have got out a frag there, but he is helping the team more than we know. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, I do see that they are deciding to use the attack of Reathic on two lion off of Zof, and they are switching Ash to Ash. Well, Ash is staying oh, Ash, but you know, that Zof to lion is very interesting to me because technically you still have the same utility other than the uh, hard breach device because you can use that Gone Six and you can also use the three stuns in your pocket, but um, especially for this downstairs hold, they, I do see, uh, again, another weird pick in Warden. He isn't playing particularly. Great. Is he spawn picking? Yeah, he is. Spawn yeah. What I am kind of confused about on the side of uh, Bloodhound here is that not Thatcher. Uh, Jackal is up, and they're choosing to bring a lion over the Jackal, which is, in my opinion, kind of crazy. Because if you have Jackal up and you're picking someone like Lion for the roam clear for that type of stuff, why not just go with the superior roam clear? Why not? You have smokes. You have the burn. He's not even bringing flashes. He's bringing claymore. I just, if you, eh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. I'm uh, two claymores being, or no, just one. I thought Four. it was just two. Uh, Orange drone. Oh. You know, Redbone immediately walking in. I believe they switched him to the entry just because they feel like he is also the MVP. Him and Ghost are really carrying that uh, that whole squad, yeah. in my opinion. Zion is that player with the great aim, so I also feel like he's doing his due diligence. But I'm very interested to see. How well they can do across the board with uh, any other operators. Yum Yum is playing a little bit uh, odd to me. Shup is the MVP of Inferno, in my opinion. Even oh, the, uh, like, you can just look at the scoreboard and he's doing really well. But everything that he's doing, he's playing sound. He's not aggressively peeking like Yum Yum right there. Where it's just mm -hmm. like, alright Yum Yum, you should probably relax. I don't know why you're trying to like, you know, aggressively swing right there. But, you know, walls are getting got right now. That mute is not going to be able to contest at all, and plus that second ADS comes up. Looks like they pretty much have sight for free right now. They're trying to panic. All the walls are just backing yeah. up right now. And I don't think they're going to be able to try and salvage this round at all, especially once that smoke canister decides to dissipate. I don't think that they're going to be able to stop this wine take. And we still have the two other uh, operators on the board as in Ghost, who is on the hatch, and then you also have the other operator. Um... Lion. If they have any sort of chance of winning this round, Shup needs to go flank that Nomad, have any sort of impact this round, because I feel like him being third floor isn't overly useful. Um, especially with them inside, they're about to start planning now. They have the flashes, they have the covers, they have not flashes, sorry. They have the cover, they have the uh lion scan. They stick it no matter what. I don't even think he was taking damage there actually. Um they have bomb down, they have great control here. 4v2, Shup and Florbo. Florbo. Um, both come back to site. Shup decides not to go for a flank. He's just pushing in blue here. It would take a miracle for them to win this because Redbone, never mind. Redbone got slammed in his angle. It's still very unwinnable for them. Florbo inside with his smoke gets top of the hatch. Excellent, excellent, excellent take there by Bloodhound. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. I, mean, I think that the timeout really saved them there. I feel I, like that really just reset their mentals. Yeah. I also think that that was complete momentum shift right there because, mm -hmm. you know, Yum Yum's just getting too aggressive on these takes and no one was holding Big Garage and they just took Big Garage so free so quickly. That you're on the board. You, the only way that is probably, in my opinion, the only site that Thatcher is really good at. Going back to bar gaming, I feel like this is the correct decision. Bar gaming was the one take that they said that they did well other than letting the Thatcher back into the site for free. If you are able to compose yourselves, if you tell Yum Yum to stop peeking and just play a little bit more passively, I don't know if he's a sub or not. Um, I believe Yum so. Yum just, I, I don't believe he would be a main. Yeah, if, if they the just let Yum Yum like, slow down a little bit. Florbo's playing really well as well. Uh, I'm not sure if he's on the main roster either, but, you know, we're, these players are playing very well. It's just that, like, these micro mistakes are costing them these rounds. Like, Yum Yum playing a little too aggressive. I'm not sure what you could have done in that situation, though, just because, you know, Thatcher Thatcher getting rid of the mutes and Thermite getting the wall open for free. It's just so hectic and just so claustrophobic, and you can't really do much, and you're just kind of stuck in very bad situations. I do see the Montane being switched. Uh, four in favor, or I do see the thermite being switched in favor of the Montane, I should say. Yum no hard breach at all. Back out for the rotate. Walking back out. Uh, they do not have any uh, hard breach, and it does look like they do uh, reinforce that wall. So all you need to do is watch mm. the windows, and you should be chilling. But it does look like they're trying to do a downstairs take, in my opinion. It's what I feel what like I am? would be best for them. Or they're just trying to sneak into sight and then walk through the door. I do not think that their upstairs hold or their upstairs take onto this player was good at all. 
Like, I, mm -hmm. I just think that it was bad. Yum Yum aggressively peeking again. Just There's no need to. Me. And I, he's, I, I'd be so surprised if he doesn't get killed here. I'm also With the pings on the mountain. I'm also surprised they did not identify the problem in not opening up the walls into the alternate site. I feel like if you open up that wall, then you can definitely get a little bit more contestion out from the players. But, you know, this is just... A, yeah, honestly, the Monte might be able to just walk into sight. I mean, I know that the smoke right. is there, but if the if the Montane has his gun up and he guns the smoke, then that's game. Yeah, it's completely it. And, and it all relies on how this plays out. I don't... Is there anyone above? No, there's one on mezzanine. That's it with the guy blue they they have their insight he's able to sneak into that corner you can if you if I, he smokes that other guy out he's dead he's dead but he's not going to he's he's smoking the window i'm yeah. not sure he knows he's in does he i'm i think so okay well, this is what's really baffling me so far is that he's getting shocked by the cam it's only zion that's covering him i don't know what else they can really do here i just think that uh eo running in so quickly may cost in the round i don't know that I, I i can't really cast this because i don't know what's happening i'm so i'm kind of confused as to why he's doing the things he's doing he's just standing in a smoke grenade right now dies to the smoke along with the and now zion jumps in along with nox on not nox uh k2 on the outside both players down two out of the three one v one v three now with just k2 alive on the lion and that's yeah the or not the not thing game. is excuse me <laughs> Um, Bloodhound played that really, really well up until this round. I don't actually know if they were just a bit confused or if they thought that there was more people somewhere else. I but the fact that they sent in the Montane and then just didn't really cover him and let him get smoked out, let him get shot by the Meister Cams. The guy on window could have shot the Meister Cam. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm. But what, one thing that I could definitely understand is I understand why he, the Ash didn't jump in. Just because the the that's one thing that I really have to give props to. I believe it was Ergo. Ergo is the person who's playing Smoke in that site. I have to give major props to him because even though I said that you can technically, you know, smoke that player out, he didn't overpeak. He, mm. You know, he was holding that window the whole time. And, you know, that, that like, one millisecond or two milliseconds of... Him going to throw that canister as the Ash walks and, you know, siege timing it is completely viable to happen. And as you did predict, this is going into overtime. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, that is completely a viable thing to do. And, you know, I'm extremely excited for Inferno right now and um, Bloodhound. I feel like they're both e incredibly evenly matched. You know, great teams, great strats. They're not doing default strats. They're kind of holding a little bit alternatively. Or, I like to say alternatively. But, um... You know, I think they're very diverse. They're not doing a lot of default stuff. I do want to see them try. If they are going to win this game, I feel like they need to rein Yum Yum in a little bit. And on the other half, if if you know Zion and K2, K2 needs to pick up his game right now. I feel like K2 yep. isn't having a very much impact across the round, especially since he's on that flex, maybe even flex entry role. I don't think he's really yep. having a lot of impact. But if he if he can you know pop off in these next two rounds or something, I feel like that's what's going to decide the game. You know, either K2 or. Uh, uh, yum yum and just uh, you know depending on how they play ergo you know played really sound that last round and i feel like that's what won the round you know him not getting too aggressive him not smoking off things that he doesn't need to smoke off him not wasting his utility you know really was the the difference in the round yeah i said this earlier with ergo i said um it always it doesn't actually come down to the how many frags the person has ergo is helping way more than we can even see and we we were able to catch it that one round last round was he was doing something that was really really smart he wasn't over swinging he played it really really well and i think that might even push uh, inferno over to the winning slot here it all relies on yum yum he's playing a better character now quote unquote better he's not playing the warden he's not playing these off brand characters he's playing a really smart character not a lot of utility he's able to over peak and not be punished because he doesn't really have that much utility on him so if he dies it does, it's not the end of the world but still having that one manpower is really nice oh i think he shot the frost mat there instead of the guy K2 finally getting some sort of um, impact on these rounds. Gonna go back. I'm assuming he's gonna drone here for this team. Very smart on K2's behalf. Nice early frag by him. Um, what I am noticing as well is Yum Yum is not watching cams. He's watching a player, even though there are cams up that would be useful. Yeah, um, especially that interesting. Default. Yeah, especially that default that Sh Shup was playing. Uh, another kill from that same position. Zion there getting a nice frag. Two very good frags onto Inferno here. 
Um, it's it's not looking too good here. Five e two. One guy very far off site, but has a nice flank on them. I don't think they actually know he's there. Oh, maybe thermite. Nah, he's giving away his position. Five e one. Shup here, the MVP on this side of Inferno. He hasn't really had much to do here. I don't even know if the hatch is open. I don't believe it is. Yeah, this doesn't look too good. I'm not sure. Oh, smoking up that rotate. Really nice. Uh, yeah, he's gonna go down around to blue. Oh, he's going around to main. F shop has to have the game of his life here because there is no way that they're not going to be watching this. Yes, it's some very nice shots, but no, he's getting caught out. I actually don't know who that is, but he's being caught out there. Guy proning bottom blue. He's he's done. He literally cannot do anything. And it's really disappointing because he's done so much this game. He's clutched up. He's done his job perfectly. And I wouldn't say it was his team that faulted him. I'm not saying that at all because at the end of the day, I think both of these teams deserve to win. Um, especially off the side of Shup and Ergo when his utility is fantastic. Same with Jen. Um, their utilities are just fantastic. Very good droners, very good all that. But I do want to say they both deserve to win and it's going to end up here being a Bloodhound round and the Bloodhound game, but very well played by either team. Well, I don't know if it's going to be a Bloodhound game yet because it hasn't gone to eight, but... Oh, is it not? No. Okay, was... sorry. But, um, you know... He also called for a tactical timeout. I also feel like, you know, them holding on to this tactical timeout until now. Right now is the perfect time to use it. Um, let me... Who's that on the Inferno? Uh, yes, Inferno called a tactical yeah. timeout right now. Um, just to point out a couple of things I noticed from the last round. K2, you know, is the reason why they won that round. Even though his only pick was Yum Yum. I mean, mm -hmm. if you can get K2 going... That's when you win, and him getting that pick is him get going. And Yum Yum on the same case, it's like, you're running the MP5, or you're not running the MP5, you're running the UMP. It's the statistically worst gun in the game. Um, You know, you just need to hit your shots, and he managed to hit all the wrong shots. He destroyed the frost map. I mean, he did do a little bit of damage to K2, but not enough to win the gunfight. I'm surprised that K2 almost lost that as well, especially since the F2 is one of the best guns in the game, in my opinion. Um, yeah. I, I Yeah, but if you get K2 working... If, if, the, if the engine fires on all cylinders, you'll go much faster, is what we're seeing here. And, like, uh, if Redbone can continue to be this more supportive player and have that type of deal, this can be locked out here very easily. If Zion can continue to get these frags, very good. Um, the only issue is, I see on Inferno, is if Yum Yum continues to get this, like, over-aggression, it can cost him that life early on. Um, and it could lead to Inferno losing this game. Everybody else, in my opinion, is playing it very structured and very safe. Um, I really want to point out Shop again. He's getting all his good frags, he's getting everything that he needs to do. I think there was only one round where I saw something bad, and I think he just walked by a person, but other than that, he's done a very good job playing his role. I'm very interested to see this uh, this pick coming out from Florbo on uh, Florbo onto the lion. I do also think that lion probably has the best utility outside of any other. Uh, you, uh, can you think of any operators that might have stuns and a gone six, or any operators that have something that's destructible no. on top of? No, I, I don't believe that any other character has stuns and gone six. I think it's just lion. I mean, oh no! I think maybe, uh, but... well, think it's banned, but yeah, yeah, I could definitely see that the, you know the operators that they pick were definitely the operators to that were correct to pick. Um, good utility usage across the board for uh, defense. A lot of the times you see people you know pocket some utility. And last round I was going to point it out, but um, the castle had a castle in his pocket, and he wasn't. I on, didn't even see that. He wasn't on camps. No. I was so happy with Shum Shum playing that character. I was like, yes, he's finally coming around. Yeah, he, only put oh, three, damn. he only put three castles down, so it was a little uh, mm -hmm. aggravating, I could say. Um, yeah, I can do that. You know, Inferno immediately putting pressure onto this player on the top med. It's kind of interesting to see how they want to try and take this dude. They need to overload with stuns. Because Yum Yum needs... Yeah, Yum Yum is doing the perfect thing right now. He's going outside. He might try to overload this. I'm noticing here that we after the burn, after all that stuff, it's going to be fine. But if it comes down to it, the Zofia cannot do what she did last time and miss her impacts. Because I think they're going to have to be... I don't know how many more mines he has there. I'm not actually sure. But it's either that Nate has... Oh, the Nate already got the shield. Perfect. We have that. They're smoking it off. Playing really passive here. The Yana clone jumps in. I believe he's thermiting a wall if I heard that correctly. No, I could be wrong here. 
Yeah, he's doing that one. But they okay. Perfect. Um, what I am noticing as well is during this entire early round, Redbone was on cams, which I want to say is a fantastic. We haven't seen that very much for people that are alive that are just sitting on cams. It was either Redbone and it was a little bit of Shup. But other than that, it's been very minimal on the side of Inferno. Um, but all in here, a minute less in the round, reinforcing off stuff still, Bloodhound getting a side. They have the holes. They fixed their issue. This could be completely revolutionary. They have all the holes above. They have the control. A minute left, and Inferno still isn't above sight. They understand there's one flanking, though. Holy! That was a really nice trade there with Jenna and K2. That was a really, really nice shot. Uh, do they know that there's a guy prone? Is he in library? I don't believe that they know that this man is prone. It is a red run, the MVP, as we said before. I don't believe that they know that he's there. Oh, that's good. oh this could head. mark Doom. Oh, he's still there. No, like ergo. And there we go. Nice, 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 nice. Oh. So getting the refrag onto Shup. Shup is their M uh, the MVP on their team. You know, both have three MVP, three, in though. Taken yeah. out. Ghost is having a hell of a game as well. Uh, you know, him doing his job, using the smokes at the correct time. Him rotating down main. I don't know if they know he is main. Oh no, Flobos has no idea. This might be the play for them. Ergo, ergo, having to drop right here is. Oh, he killed one's one's against Zion. Gets the kill though. Two v one. Got last game main stairs. Very nice. I don't know. I think that Bloodhound. They played that round really, really well. I think they held above for just long enough to cause really big panic in the eyes of Inferno. There, uh, if Inferno was able to take above and actually get some holes open, get some actual control, because the only person like I think it was like a minute, maybe under a minute, and Redbone was still alive, prone there. They yep. were able to take control, and they didn't really do anything with the control after they had it. They kind of just dropped hatch. They were able to win that gunfight against Zion. But the Aruni there on EO was able to just clean up shop, and it was very nicely taken there by uh, Blood. Um, yeah, I feel like it was a little bit more interesting of a round that time. Um, you know, the the play coming out from the Aruni to stay in sight, I'm a little surprised that they both went into wine. And... Um, or not wine, excuse me, but the, you know, the fridge side or whatever you would like to call it. But I think, um, I think that, it's called wine closet. I'm not sure. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, uh, you can call it a closet or a janitor or whatever it is. But, you know, that little closet, I'm surprised that they doubled up in there. But as you can see, Worked out. you know, having those extra rotate holes allows for them to play a little bit more aggressively. That's why I feel like if Inferno took their time, you know, they go through the VOD. And they'll say, all right, let's just put like maybe one or two holes in this wall. You don't even need to make it a line. You can just need to put two holes and that whole site's clear. Both really, really good game across the board. You get the one point for going into overtime from Inferno. That is what you want. Two points for Bloodhound, one point for Inferno. I'm not sure if this is how the league does it, but I'm just going to go off of Pro League. Great game. They had, uh, you know, from both teams going through this VOD, there's not a lot that you can, you know, fault. One thing that I would say that from Inferno is they should probably either look to uh, try and, you know, change or even maybe replace how um, Yam Yam plays. Yam Yam was playing a little bit too aggressive. Um, needs to run in. Wasn't running a lot of operators that were useful. I'm um, pretty sure that we saw a pretty diverse operator play pool today. Um, you know, we had some Warden knock. So we had Warden Knock or Amaru. And I'm Maybe. also going to continue from the last game as well that we just cast it. We had um, BB, Blitz, Ying, um, all ops that aren't usually picked for like default strats. I would say uh, Ying, um, Amaru. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, think that was it. Yeah. No. Just, you know, ops that aren't usually picked, we saw a lot of today. And, um, you know, I'm just very interested to see how they try and, you know, fix how Yam Yam is or to see how he's playing. Just because, like, a lot of the time, I don't I don't see a reason why he should be jumping outside. Uh, even, yeah, if it, and... even if it is that 0.1% chance of him getting that kill, I don't, don't like it. He, him, it just promotes too aggression or too much aggression from him. And, you know, you saw it a lot when he would just go and try and play close with, like, you know, uh, SMGs, even though th they have high fire rates. Or even if he wasn't hitting his shots correctly with the castle, I feel like, you know, maybe if you can, um, if 
could put them in a little bit better positions and say, all right, you need to like relax. You have you have a decent amount of skill. You you can at least hit some of your shots. I feel like if you're able to just like rein them in and say, all right, play a little bit more passively. Uh, you know, up his you know, meant or his like strategic confidence like, almost. You know, I don't know. I I guess you could say or his game knowledge or game sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're able to up that to understand or his situational awareness. Um, yeah. You know, to say, all right, we shouldn't go push this. And he does. Like, or we shouldn't go Amaro. And he does. That's the difference between the game. If you don't allow Inferno to do it, or if you tell, Inf- or if Inferno goes regular ops, they win that game. Because there are I... three rounds I could think of that because he was al- alternate ops was the reason why they didn't, you know, win. I wouldn't say it was because of the alternate ops. I, was, I would say that the way he died, like that first round when he died as knock basement, and then second round when he marred in big window, it kind of set the pace for how he was going to play the game. And it may not have been specifically because of those characters, because we see in pro league every once in a while we'll see a knock pick or we'll see a uh, Mara pick. It's not because of the character; it's because of who's playing it. And I'm not going to harp on Yamio here because I'm sure he's a very competent player, and I'm sure that he's has many future games in the future that he's going to do very well in. But that game. It kind of fell on him and why Inferno was able to, was unfortunately why they lost that was because some of those rounds where they could have used that 5v5, where they could have used that extra manpower, he Amaro's in big window. Oh, yeah. He overswings something as Warden. He does something like that. And it may not be that he's on the live roster. It may not be that I have very little idea of what these teams are about. But I do want to say if they can fix that issue, may not fix Yam Yam, but if they can fix that issue with that overswinging, if they can fix that kind of structure issue. Inferno seems like a hell of a good team. Oh yeah, uh, for the future, ex- you could definitely expect a lot from both teams, especially since Inferno managed to push Bloodhound all the way to a eight-six overtime. You still got into overtime. You still got that one point. That's what yep. you need. You need those points. Uh, a great game coming out from uh, the who was on Bloodhound? It was I. I have uh, Zion yeah. and K two. Zion K two, and then. There's the other player who we said was the MVP, but I have I have a terrible Ooh, like, memory. So do I. Hold on a second. Uh, K2, Zion, Arc. Oh, Ergo was on Inferno. Mm, yeah, Ergo. Well, one second, one second. I can get you this for a second. Uh, we were talking about Redbone. Yeah, Redbone, Redbone was... I, I'm not going to... Yeah, just fantastic player. Truly, like, I... I would give him props, and I was just casting. That is, like I would, I would first go up to him and be like, "You did fantastic that game because of how much he did. Like he did everything. Name something, and he did it. He was able to entry when he needed to. He was able to drone. He played Thatcher majority of the game, which I want to say won them a lot of the rounds, especially with the way that he played that um the post plant there on bar. He was he's playing outside, played it really well, and he didn't overswing once. And that's not saying that uh, Inferno did anything wrong here because. I want to also give props to Ergo. He may have been the statistically worst player on their team, but the way that he played a lot of that with his smoke, whether it be on kitchen, whether it be on bar, he played that absolutely fantastically. Uh, Yum Yum may have been at the top of the team, but I think that that least like impactful spot maybe belongs to him rather than Ergo because Ergo was doing the most and he was doing amazing. And Shup, again, I want to also point out him, the frags he was getting, the very important ones, and he was consistently doing it as well. It wasn't like a fluke round where he got five kills or four kills. He was consistently getting these really important frags, and he did it really well. Uh, so what, two things I'm going to uh, point out is Redbone is the like the operator, or he. If you were to take like an All Star team from the teams that we've t- t- like casted today, the number one support player that we would that would probably be the number one pick would be. Redbone, because Redbone yeah. did his job. And second would be, uh, oh, who is it? He's, he's on Inferno. The Ergo? Smoke. Yeah, Ergo. Um, Ergo played that very well, like very composed, very together. They also had, I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure if they had a stand-in or not with the, uh, I don't, it's the V2 player. Um, uh, Fl- Florbo? Yeah. Florbo? Yeah, Florbo. He played very well. He was connected with the team. He was able to give... You can tell that he was giving good comms. You can tell that, you know, he trusted his team to do certain stuff, you know. 
um, shop upstairs, you know, was a menace. It's, I'm not, I wouldn't even call it stat padding because a lot of the times they would just walk into him and he, he has the gun skill to back it up as well, especially with Jaeger, which is a gun. That's true, you know, in my opinion, not, not the best. But, um, you know, Jaeger and then going to Bloodhound, Redbone went off, popped off. Zion is the reason why they won. Zion is the reason why they won. Him and K2 are the reason why they won, only for the fact that K2 got the momentum going into overtime, forced them to match point, you know, killing Yum Yum. Even though it's Yum Yum, you know, you still got that entry frag. It becomes a 4v5, and that's the main player gone from um, that those West Main uh, Trophy Soul Stairs. You know, those yeah. stairs, I feel like those are the best stairs that you, if you're trying to clear from there, you know, that's how you do it. One thing that I would say uh, to, you know, add to their strat book, they had a castle upstairs in the bathroom. I understand that castle, but on top of that, what you should do is you should have that castle make shotgun holes into the floor so you can see down to the wine stairs. That's a lot Definitely. of the stuff that would counter that whole strat. If you just add in these small critiques that don't even, like, drastically change your strat book at all or change anything because you just need the two holes it doesn't even need to be like a massive hole it needs to be something that's at least peekable in uh bar gaming so that that thatcher doesn't get put in a clutch situation and on yeah. top of that if you um put the if you on top of that if you put the uh player or if you make those holes in the bathroom and you have... Since there is a player in bathroom, you can technically play those holes. Because for Jaeger, it's the whole time. If he plays those holes, you win that game. You don't have to Easily. worry about the stairs. What I what I am going to say is a lot of the time that... It could have just been who we were watching at the time. But every time that we were noticing something that went devastationally wrong with Inferno... It kind of fell on the back of Yum Yum. I'm not going to keep harping on him like this... But even on the castle round, uh, over peaking and losing that gunfight, that in my opinion was pretty, it was unnecessary and or very in his favor. I don't believe that it should have gone the way that it did. And then after that, Zion was able to get up there. This is on the round that they were kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, Zion was able to push up, get two frags as well. It kind of was just a little bit more uh, foolish, I, I want to say, like irresponsible. He, he also had a castle in his pocket, like. Uh, he wasn't very composed. competitively there today. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't. I don't know if that's composed and uh, in the right yeah. mindset, in our opinion. But you know, great game from everybody. I think Fantastic. That everybody played well. You know, Yum Yum has great aim on top of that, so I feel like that's something that like you know benefited him playing those alternate oper operators, where it's just like you know he had the aim to back it up. That that double kill upstairs when they were when kitchen oh was fantastic. God, it completely awesome. him, changed him it. His Mozzie oh, just completely swung the momentum in yeah. their favor. Amazing. Insane. Moment. I I didn't think that the hollow was gonna be a good choice, but God, he makes it look easy. You know, yeah. And one thing that I will say is that I did see a lot of weird sights today. You know, usually you yeah. see a 1.5 on Mozzie, and on mm -hmm. top of that, they usually see a 1.5 on Ash. Zion wasn't running a 1.5. He was running a uh, hollow on Ash the whole time. I'm not sure if he mm -hmm. has changed it yet, or if he just likes it that way. Um, you know, 1.5 is one of the best sights in the game, and so, uh, so is the hollow, but I feel like the 1.5 is a little bit better, but, you know, that's just personal preference, so you know, he popped off as well, so I don't have any room to judge. But, you know, great game from everybody. Uh, Bloodhound Inferno ended up going 8-6 uh, in Bloodhound favor. Uh, the two points secured for Bloodhound, but the points secured for Inferno. So, uh, it was a great game across the board. Do you have anything uh, to end it with? I couldn't have asked for a better game to cast my second time. Like, that was actually really nice to watch. Oh, yeah. um, again, it was really nice casting with you, and I think... Uh, I'm I'm trying to trying to get the hang of it, but uh, I just want to say thank you guys, everybody that's watching the stream, and I want to say thank you to these two teams for giving us such a really, 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 really good game. Not um, just, yeah, not the not just the two teams, but the four teams as well. Even though, uh, sorry, know, going back to those as well. Sorry, yeah, I completely forgot about the <laughs> the, the courage uh, versus the who was the other team? Uh, Acme. And Acme. Yeah, great game from those two as well. You know. I, I had a pleasure casting today as well. Um, looking forward to the future. I ho you have a very bright future in casting as well. So I hope that everybody has 
a great day uh, or a great night technically if you are on the eastern seaboard um you know i'm proud of everybody who played today and uh they every every single team that we've casted today has oh, the potential to make playoffs as long as they can make those uh fixes uh, uh if there's anything to fix for with uh, for bloodhound it would be that they just need to identify what attacks would work the best. You know, Bloodhound very, had a very sound game, but they also need K2 to play a little better across the board if they want to compete against the upper tier teams. Yep. Um, but, you know, great games across the board. Uh, you know, it was a pleasure. I, and uh, I think uh, I think today it kind of showed something. No matter what team we, we saw today, it wasn't predominantly the fraggers that got to see this they, they, they weren't like the reason that a lot of rounds were won it was a lot of the support players there was no like really standout fraggers that i really saw it kind of fell on the support players to kind of do their job properly and when the support players were able to do what they were supposed to do they run the round and that often was the team with the better support players that won the game mm -hmm. we can all say like zion did a fantastic job entering but that was also in line with Redbone being able to drone him and have all these things that Redbone can also do. And it was, honestly, today, really reliant on the support players. And it shows in the results. Oh, yeah. I think that was a great game across the board from everybody. And I think that uh, they should be proud of how they played today um, for all four teams. But I think that's it for today. Um, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our cast today. I'm sure you can check in. There should be pings in TPL. At TPO, you can follow us on Twitter. Uh, if you'd like to give your uh, Twitter at, you can now. Oh, I, uh, at, at Golden's Game on Twitter. Uh, I don't really post much. I, yeah, it, it's it's just there. I don't know. All That's right. about it. And my at is a one pha underscore r six. It's the same thing. Alpha except for a one underscore r six. Um, you can follow us there if you'd like any updates or any uh, help doing any bot review. I am always available. Uh, you can just DM me on Twitter, and I'll give you my insight. But past that, I uh, hope everybody enjoyed today, and uh, thanks for watching. Yeah.